Hey, welcome to the Aaron May Roundtable. Today is the 21st of February, 2023, and I have a good friend, uh, Scott from uh, Stratagem Trade. He's going to talk to us about the Dragonfly. Scott and I have known each other for a while, and I've been, uh, I went to a conference, I think you did, in um, Florida, right. and we met for uh, met for dinner at Lou Malnati's in Chicago a couple months ago, and I'm looking forward to coming back to Chicago. I grew up there. and uh, Not for Lou Malnati's, though. Yeah, not for little amount of these, but uh, <laughs> go back to Geno's East. So yes, yes. But uh, really looking forward to the Dragonfly. I've been working on a spreadsheet for Scott for his class, and uh, he's teaching a class on this in much more detail this weekend. But this will be kind of an intro to the Dragonfly. So um, Scott, really happy to have you here, and uh, yeah, take it away. Okay, thanks for having me, and hello everybody. Um, Tom, I also took a snippet of the spreadsheet that you were making and put it on the slide. But if you don't want oh, great. to uh, no, you're fine. reveal the mighty eyes behind the screen before it's ready. No, we're good. I'll, I'll skip over it. I don't want to steal your thunder. You Hope know, you like it. it so it's far. your, I love it. It's, you know, you do an unbelievable job and I think most people would benefit from it because it's just a huge time saver. It helps you avoid making math mistakes and, and finding trades and stuff like that. I think it's, everyone it speeds things up from, yeah it's yeah. if you weren't a floor trader in the you know 80s and 90s where you just had to do math all day long it's a huge time saver now i'm an antique so hitting buttons takes me longer than doing the math but uh no i love it it's i'm impressed i, I love the stuff that you put in there that's not even part of what it's intended for <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> the extras yeah exactly you know, it's, it's ingenious. But uh, as, as Tom said, you know, we're having a mini class, which uh, Stratagem has four times a year, roughly, on topics that we can't cover in our normal practical option or pot class. And our pot classes are typically two hours every Wednesday night, but there are just some things that our students want to learn everything about that can't be done in two hours or even four sequential classes in a row um taking up a whole month and so we have to go into a different route which is having a mini class which is two days over each weekend or over a weekend that is about eight hours a day it's an intensive thing so this weekend is our dragonfly class and tom asked me to speak a little bit about it because it's quickly become a very popular strategy. So if you will, I will explain to you what the dragonfly is. And I put a link in the chat to the class information. So if people are curious, they can click on that and learn more. Sounds great. So we have to go through the disclaimers. I don't know if you did it already, but Tom's nope, disclaimers, not yet. Tom's disclaimer is even more strict than mine. Um, but it just says we're giving out education, not advice. We're not acting as broker dealers or investment advisors or tax specialists. And everyone that wants to participate in this should read the disclaimers on my site, on Tom's site, and agree to it before continuing. Anything you want to add? Um, no, it's for educational purposes. Uh, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Yeah, yeah. And, and all that, all that really standard stuff. Yeah, all that standard stuff that, you know, and I don't really care because my lawyers are so good. Anyone wants to sue me, you know, can have fun. Well, I don't have a lawyer, so I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback <laughs> off of yours. <laughs> I mean, they, if you read our disclaimers, they're almost comedy because I don't care. And uh, anyhow, the session is being recorded, correct? It is. Okay, I always put this in there because I forget to hit the start, the start record button. Then I got to do the class a second time. Yeah, I forgot to do that last week, and I'm going to start putting this kind of slide in just to remind myself, too. It's a good idea. Yeah, this isn't for anyone's benefit other than the mentally handicapped on this side of the screen. So <laughs> I, I've i done it like once a year, and as soon as I put this slide in, I stopped doing it. But I want to thank everybody for participating in the session, and I want to thank Tom for sharing his audience with us. Um, Tom and I have gotten a little bit closer over the years and I love what he does and his dedication to the students. For those who don't know who we are, Stratagem is an education company. Um, 
I was in charge of trade secrets, optionetics, and then I had my own company, which morphed into Stratagem. Some of you guys probably have heard about me in other places because I was the sp I was the one who uh, first introduced the world to the broken wing butterfly and then coined the phrase and everything else. But it's like John F. Kennedy said, <laughs> You know, success has a thousand fathers and failures an orphan. Um, I've got guy. Wow, thinker someone just sent me a message. It blew my screen up. Yeah, it's uh, uh, too. Um, can you still see me? I can. Yeah. Okay, because I all my all my screens except for the one took over. But um, as an education company, well, we only hire floor man off. Uh, fund managers or retired floor traders as instructors. Um, also, you probably have seen us in stocks, commodities, traders, magazine, even people in Italy um, see us all the time. We're pretty big in Italy. I uh, guest lecture at Northwestern University quite often. But uh, our biggest accolade that we got going on right now is our practical option tactics class, which is held every Wednesday, but we also do roughly 250 to 350 trades a year where everybody sees everything we do from the start to the adjustments to the closing out. Now, I was a floor trader on all the, the bond futures pit, which is the board of trade, the S&P 500 floor, which is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, but I spent the majority of my time at the Chicago Board Options Exchange in this exact pit that you're seeing here which is the S&P 500 options bit or SPX. Um, pot, we go through a plethora of topics. I won't go into any detail, but it, like I said, it's every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Chicago time. And um, everybody just follows the trades and the updates we send out several times a day. Now, this class we're having on the Dragonflies on the 25th and 26th this weekend from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Chicago time. And other than that, let's get into the topic. I don't want to turn into a salesman, but here's the flyer that if you want, you can get from the office. Um, the early registration or the early bird registration is closed as of the 11th. But at the end, we always give Tom's group, Air Mirror all kinds of medicines that nobody else gets. We Nobody gets a better deal than when they go through um, our early birds or through Air Mirror, which we're gonna extend. But some of you guys know me from the Broken Wing Butterfly. It was written up in Stocks and Commodities Magazine as being the Bible of option trading. And because of that, you see, and I love the butterflies. It's one of my favorite strategies because there's so many derivatives of it. You have the standard butterfly. It's a great way of hedging off a vertical spread that you're in that you don't like anymore. Um, and then there's derivatives of it, like the BWB or the dragonfly that you're gonna learn today. Now, for those who don't know what a broken wing butterfly is, it helps in the understanding of what a dragonfly is because I'll use this to compare and contrast. For those who do know what a broken wing butterfly is, understanding it will help you grasp the dragonfly beautifully because it's really a um, BWB folded inside out. So a BWB is just a standard butterfly where the out of the money wing is pulled one strike further out in order to reduce your financial cost or outlay of the trade. Whereas it's basically just a vertical uh, butterfly with a vertical spread sail attached to it, usually at the tail end. So here's an example of what a broken wing butterfly looks like. And then I'll show you the dragonfly and it'll make more sense. Oh, let's see, can I move this header? Oh, yes, I can. Oh, beautiful. Okay, your menu bar was in front of my screen, but now I can see it. Um, but let's say you go out and buy a $24.95, $24.85, ten dollar put spread, and it costs you two dollars and ten cents. That's what a graph looks like. Now, 
if you go out and turn it into a traditional butterfly, you'll just go equidistant further out of money, which is ten dollars, and you'd sell the twenty four eighty five, twenty four seventy five put spread, and maybe collect a dollar forty. And when you graph these two together, it looks like this pink line, which is a standard butterfly for a seventy cent debit. And people love butterflies because they look at it and say, look, I got 70 cents invested in this and I can make $10. My risk is very finite and very low and my profit potential is pretty big. But once you start doing butterflies enough, you realize how hard it is to hit on one, right? Even in a product like the SPX, with a $10 wide butterfly between strikes, it's hard to hit because look, today we're down 80 points. We could put on a butterfly today that's $10 wide and it's, you know, knowing what the range is and it'd still be difficult to hit on it today. So people wanted to figure out a way to lower the cost of a butterfly. And that's why when I started introducing the broken wing butterfly, which I'd been doing in the OEX pit, in the S&P 500 SPX pit for five years, 10 years. So here's all the BWB is, is we'll just add an extra sale further out of the money of another put spread. And this time it's only $5 wide, but it brings in the crucial 80 cents. Remember that the butterfly was costing 70. So if we can sell another vertical spread that brings in 80 cents, now we're into the trade for a 10 cent credit instead of a 70 cent debit. If the butterfly expires worthless, we still make 10 cents instead of losing 70 cents. Graphed out, a BWB looks like this pink line right here. Okay. And those who are familiar with BWBs in pretty much the whole world's becoming familiar with them. They're, they're a pretty um, big staple, if you will, of people's trading strategies. Um, this should help you understand a dragonfly. Now, if you look at a traditional butterfly and add the sale of a vertical spread, what you end up with is the broken wing butterfly that looks like this. And now we're into a trade for a 10 cent credit. And if the market jumps and starts going higher, I'm trying to figure out this way, we still make at least 10 cents instead of losing 70 cents. So let's continue on. Now, comparing the broken wing butterfly and the dragonfly is, is the easiest way to learn the dragonfly. They're similar, but they're different. Going through the definitions, we already said that a BWB or broken wing butterfly is a butterfly with an extra vertical sail further out of the money, whereas the dragonfly is a butterfly with an extra vertical purchase instead of sale closer to the money. And they both have their unique benefits and liabilities. The BWB is best done when there's one, two days remaining until expiration because we benefit from the time decay or the collapsing of the normal distribution curve of option premiums. As time goes by, there's less time till expiration. The market can move less. It's more likely to close inside of our center strike. The tails become cheaper so we can buy the risk back cheap if we want, et cetera. Whereas the dragonfly is best done with a fair amount of time remaining to ex expiration. I typically like to go at least a week out in time. The only time I go less than a week out in time is maybe on a day like this where we're at say 4,000 in the SPX and just sitting right at support level. If I were and I'm not saying I am, but if I were of the mind that we're going to bounce from here, maybe a two-day BW or a dragonfly would be great if I capture a bounce real fast. If I think it may take a week, two weeks for us to bounce because we're going to be sitting in this area parked around 4,000 for a while, 
the BWB is going to be the better. Now, the original on uh, the initial risk of a BWB is the short spread losing money. We sold an extra tail to bring in some cash. The risk is we go through that tail. Whereas the risk of the dragonfly is not a market movement risk, but it's a premium risk. It's the initial debit or the premium we paid for the spread. So the easiest way to really learn what a dragonfly is, is just simply look at an example. Here are the two most recent examples I've done in pot. I could go back and we did some last year towards the end of the year that were just phenomenal. Okay, I could cherry pick and say, look, here's a dragonfly we put on for zero and we made six grand on it. But that's not realistic. I'm just gonna go off of the most recent ones that we did in our practical option cl tactics class, pot class. Um, and we're working a dragonfly right now as I speak. Um, I've got an order in to get long the market via dragonfly out in March options that's sitting in the pit waiting to get filled, turned this class. Um, but the most recent one we did was on February 15th. It's still open. We haven't closed it out. It's a very remedial one to learn. We just put the trade on, hedged the risk off, and it's sitting there. This is gonna be a good example to learn from. From after this, we'll go into one that's a little bit more complicated. Now, when I started this example, <clears throat> the market was stuck in a range between 4,000 and 4,200. And we started it last Tuesday. You can see where the market was. And it looked like there was a possibility that we could go higher. So if we were gonna break through this sort of line that's right here, 4150, one could assume, and I'm not like the world's greatest technical analyst, you know, I, I use it a little bit, but I think technical analyst for me is more of a explanation why I was wrong on my opinion of which way the market was going. But if the market goes through this line, one could make an a very valid argument that we're going back to 4,200. And so I wanted to plant a little time bomb there, a trade that wouldn't cost me much money. But if we did go and test 4,200, like the market has a tendency to find these big round numbers, I can make some serious money with very little money at risk. So, decided to put on a, a dragonfly around the 4200 area. I started out with the 4190, 4200, 4205 dragonfly. And you can see that in this example, the strike prices are not equidistant apart. We're long the 4190, 4200 call spread. And then we're short the 4200, 4205. So we're long a $10 spread and short a $5 spread. It's a butterfly with the long vertical spread smashed in between. And this trade cost $1.65. And I was gonna keep it on for a couple of days. By the end of the day, the market started feeling like it just wouldn't get above 4150. It was running out of energy. I didn't want to be in this trade anymore. So I spread it off. Why? Because even though I paid it on $1.65 on this five times, it's still $825 of risk. Nobody wants to lose $825. And I wasn't happy with the trade anymore. I don't know how many people here, other than me, get into a trade and then watch the market for a couple hours and say, you know what? I just don't like this thing anymore. And instead of closing it out, what can I do with it? And so we spread it off. Okay, I liked the profit potential if we went to 4,200. If we went to 4,200, what was really great about this trade 
is if we went to 4,200, I've got great profit potential. If we, I don't know how many people have ever gone through this where they bought a butterfly and the market starts going right towards the center of their butterfly and then at the last second blows right through it and their butterfly goes out worthless and that's frustrating too. Here, if we go through all the strikes, we can still make $1,675. And that's a very powerful aspect of the dragonfly that the butterfly doesn't have. And a BWB, you're actually loathing going through the strikes. So, as I said, by the end of the day, the market just was running out of juice and we were getting news coming out from the Fed governor saying that maybe a 50 basis point hike instead of 25 would be more appropriate. And it, it just, there was no positive energy going on. And so I said, I'm just going to take this risk off. I don't want $825 of risk on this trade. I'll wait for a better time to get along the market. And so what I did is I spread off some of that by selling the 4200 4205 took in $1.60, and it left me with this. And this is essentially a 132 butterfly, $10 by $5 wine. But I could have, instead of selling the 4200 4205 I could have sold the 4210 15 the 2025 There's a huge amount of different strikes you can play with in ways of hedging this. We just opted to hit and run, leave it with this, have $25 of risk to make $5,000 if we do go back to 4200 and move on to the next thing. Okay, now had we sold the 1015 for 15 cents less, which I was actually trying to do and then just gave up on it, what the trade would have looked like is this. And we can get some really unique looking graphs going this way. There's dozens of ways we can hedge these things off, which is another reason why our students in the pot class are like clamoring to learn all the different possible ways of playing with this. And that's why it's taken us the, the steps necessary to do a mini class and have a two day class to teach everything there is about this strategy. Now, you'll see that the original order is $10 by $5 wide. There you see the normal $10 butterfly would be the 90, 4,200, 42.10. The call spread that's embedded in this is at the 42.05, 42.10. If you can't see that, put these two together. Take the vertical spread and the butterfly and combine it. And what do you get? The dragonfly. Okay, this is a better way of looking at it for some people because you can see that gets created and these two cancel each other out and you're left with the dragonfly over on the right. Okay. Then there was another one that we did right before this. And this shows you uh, a little bit about managing the trade. What it showed you is basically initiating the trade I'll show you another example on all the different ways in which once the trade's in, we can start managing it. For those who trade regular butterflies, you go out and buy a $5 butterfly, and now you're guessing when you can sell it, when you should sell it. If you put on the, the 4195, 4200, 4205 butterfly and two days before expiration, we're at 4200. That butterfly hasn't opened up yet. It's not going to open up until, you know, the last few hours of expiration. So what are the odds that the market is just going to sit there at 4200 for two more days so that you can make the maximum amount of butterfly? It's a very emotional thing in terms of managing the trade of 
when to get out. I bought it for 20 cents. I can get out at 40 cents, but tomorrow I'll be worth a buck and on expiration is worth five. Where do I get out? With the dragonfly, it's a lot more nimble in terms of what I call harvesting money out of the trade. We put the trade on and we try to get a little bit of money out and then try and take a little bit more money out, but still leave on position that can make money up until the moment of expiration. And this will give you an example of that. And this was trade 13 that we did. And again, this was not a home run. This is what I would call a, a single, maybe a double, depending on how you keep score. Um, anyone wants to see home runs, I can send you examples of trades we've done with the Dragonfly that were home runs, but it's not indicative how often the, did even, you know, Hank Aaron run, you know, hit home runs. I'm trying to show you garden variety, honest to goodness, what you can expect type trades. So again, we started out with the dragonfly. This time we did 15 by 10. You see, we started with the 40, 75, 90, 4,100 call spread. It's $15 wide by $10 wide. We can do them 25 by 20, et cetera. There's a lot of versatility in this trade. Doing this five times was $975 of risk. It's not a lot of risk for a five contract trade, but it's not a little either. Nobody wants to watch $1,000 go out the window. So step one, we put this trade on. Two days later, the market went in our anticipated direction a little bit. And because we have five extra contracts of call spreads embedded in the trade. I decided to sell three of them out. I didn't sell out all five. I sold three because I wanted some upside potential in case the market kept going through 4,100, 4,150, et cetera. But it did whittle our risk in half. And then from there, guess what? We had a trade that we were much more comfortable with $500 of risk than about $1,000 of risk. So we could just sit there and wait. And what we had on is if the market went through to the upside, unlike the butterfly, we still make money. On a regular butterfly, goes through all your strikes, it's worthless. Here, we would still make some money. We had a huge range of profit potential the SPX could close within a $50 range in a couple of days, which is huge. And we that's where our sweet spot was. And if the market fell, yes, we had $500 worth of risk, but we were waiting to sell the risk off if it looked like the market was going down. Okay, we could have taken all the risk off when we sold the three contracts by selling five, but we decided to push it a little bit. Now on expiration day, the market jumped up big. And you, that shaded area to the right is where the market was the day of expiration. Not the ideal spot. We were bouncing between 4130 and 4160. We wanted it closer to 4100. It was too high. Also, we had $525 of risk into the trade. Only if we went below 40.75. I wasn't too worried about it, but because we had two contracts extra laying around that we could sell, we decided to start peeling the profits. Okay. And what I mean by that is what I brought up earlier harvest some of this money out of this trade. I got two contracts of call spreads. I can sell some far out of the money for 50 cents a little less far out for a buck that brings in $200 closer to have the money for 250 or in the money for 400. And if the market falls hard and the whole trade goes out worthless, I make money to the downside too, because the market was so chaotic and moving so big. What I decided to do was sell the 4,100 4,105 call spread at four bucks. 
That way, if the market decided it wanted to close below 4,000, we would have sold two contracts at four bucks, brings in $800, and we get to keep that $800 minus the $500 debit, get a $300 credit no matter what. Okay, then as the day went on, I decided to harvest some more money. And I did it in a way that you wouldn't actually think was harvesting money. You would think it'd be putting money to work, but it's really a harvest we're, because we're increasing our profit potential. And if it doesn't work out, even though we put money into the trade, the previous sale that we did that brought in $800 pays for most of the purchases we did. So I started buying call spreads back. Okay, if you look at the top here, we were selling to 2530. So I started buying 2530 back at a dollar and two dollars, which is the average price of where I sold it. And you think, well, now he's putting $300 out. Yeah, but I took in $800 from the previous trade and I'm bumping up my profit potential given the fact that we're hanging out in this area, not this area. Okay, so from there, we harvested it and then what does the trade look like? If we had on a normal butterfly, we would have lost money on the close. This black line shows what a normal butterfly looks like. So if we had on a broken wing butterfly, we would have lost money too because we probably would have sold the 0510 or the 1015 call spread. And at the close of the day, we'd already gone to 4136. So a traditional butterfly or even the broken wing butterfly would have lost money. Whereas what we did is we made $1,230. Again, it's a base hit. It's had $10,000 or $5,000 profit potential. The market didn't cooperate and we still make $1,200. Whereas a BWB or a regular butterfly, we would have lost a little bit of money. So even though it's a base hit, it feels like a home run compared to some of the other strategies we could have done. Okay. Now, I showed you this earlier. This is the flyer we have for the dragonfly spread. And you see on there, it says synthetics too. And that's because part of the dragonfly and teaching the dragonfly this weekend that's so intensive is the synthetics that I'm gonna be teaching for alternate hedging techniques. I don't know if anyone in your group, Tom, has day trade issues where they just have to be very careful not to buy and sell the same option every day. Yeah, there definitely are. It's with my group, it's probably a third to a half. I haven't taken a formal poll, but when I accidentally do it, I hear about it. You know, like I can't do this. So I, I don't have any day trades left. Okay, well, let's find an alternative. Now, someone asked, is there a reason why I'm doing it with calls? No, this actually works just as good, if not better, with puts. The only reason I was doing call examples is because until last week, the market was running up all year from December 31st, the end of the year, up until maybe two weeks ago or a week ago, the market just ran up. We were up 8% in January. So I could have, you know, easily done this with puts just like a BWB. And it actually, you can get better separation with puts because of the skew. Okay, what would cost me, just like a BWB, I don't know if anyone does a lot of BWBs, but you'll see that you might be able to do a 15 by $20 BWB in the SPX with puts, and you go to try to do it with calls for the same price, and you can only do a 10 by 15 because of skew. This actually works better with puts. 
okay? But we just been running up and it was a cheap way of getting along a market. I didn't like being long. I don't want to buy any market that's up 8% in a month. Seems a little overdone. So I don't want to not participate because the trend is your friend, but it was real cheap. Get a vertical, you know, a dragonfly on, hedge it off, and at least a little time bound in case we keep going higher. Now, again, you saw it's still the first one is still open at 4,200. We're nowhere near 4,200. It's most likely going to go out worthless. But what does it cost me? A nickel. It's not like a vertical spread that gets torn up. Or a regular butterfly, that would have cost me 70 cents. Now, what level of option trading do you need to understand your class? It's going to be a very remedial class to start with. Everything I do, I attempt. Sometimes I fail, but I attempt to start out at the basic, the most lowest common denominator. I sort of take Richard Feynman's example if I, by pretending I'm teaching to my grandkids. And if I can make my grandkids, who are, you know, 10 years old, understand this, then I've done a good job teaching. If I can't teach to anything to my 10-year-old, I don't understand it enough. And so it starts out at a remedial level and then builds from there. Because I know, at least for my students, at Stratagem, they're, some people have been with me for a decade. And they're very sophisticated. I've got professional traders. I've got guys who are running huge, huge billion-dollar funds as students. I have professional traders in Germany and Italy and guys running retirement uh, accounts for, for cities and stuff who are very sophisticated traders. And I've got guys who just learned what a vertical spread last week was. And I can't pigeonhole to just one group. So I start out remedial, which kind of bores the professionals for until I build up from there. And then I get more and more sophisticated as I go. And that's why we also record it because once we get very complicated, sometimes you got to hear it two or three times. And that's why we record everything so you can listen to it as often as you want. But I would say that very seldom do I get leave people in the dust where they don't understand it? And we're like Tom, we're very generous in returning emails. If you got a question, let us know. Um, a lot of times I'll get people who have questions about a certain strategy or something I said in a class. And you, you said, you mentioned this, you know, iron condor in a class, and I'm not really familiar with iron condor. Well, then I usually just compliment somebody a two hour class on iron condors that we did in pot a month earlier. So I, you know, it, it's one of those things where I very seldom have people lost forever. They may be a little bit confused, and, but I pull them along slowly and they eventually catch on. But what's great about this is that it is going to be a little bit complicated on the second day because I am going to go into hedging and spreading off of the trade. I don't think enough people in this industry, in the education side, talk enough about spreading the trade off or managing the trade. They like the thunder. They like dishing out thunder to people, their audience, where they say, look at what I did and I made this. Da, 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 and everybody's excited. But really, it's been my experience, especially on the trading floor, that you can throw on any trade. It's how you manage it and how you get out. That's the real art. You know, a, a good trader can take the biggest piece of junk trade and wiggle a lot of it or minimize the damage at least. And that's the art. And so we're gonna focus on that a lot. Anybody can put on a butterfly, 
how to harvest it and manage it. That's the tricky part that few people cover enough of. Um, you know, I, I see a bunch of questions coming in and I'll, I'll get to it hopefully in the next couple minutes with the rest of the slides. And if not, I'll circle back. Let me know if I didn't answer your question and I'll attack it again. But you'll see that the class schedule is pretty intensive to answer people's questions. How tough is it? It's going to start out with the setup and not enough people even work on that. You know, how far out to expiration do you go? Which expiration do you pick? What strikes do you do a 10 by 5? Do you do a 15 by 10? Do you do a 30 by 25? It all depends on volatility levels. The, the range in the market, et cetera. There's a lot of criteria, step-by-step -step criteria that we're gonna be presenting in the class. What width selection do you pick? We're also gonna be talking about overlap and dragonflies. I do that a lot in my pot classes where I put on a trade, bullish trade, like 4,200, the market falls. I don't think the 4,200 is gonna go anywhere. I don't think it's gonna come back to life. We're not gonna get the 4,200 in a week. So I'll go down to 4,100 and put another one on, but maybe some of the strikes are overlapping. And it becomes this giant tent where the two are connected. And it's hard to differentiate the two at a certain point. So we got to talk about that. So we can talk about overlapping on the trades, exit strategies and adjustments. And again, I really don't think too many companies focus on exit and adjustments enough and we're going to talk a lot this weekend about exit and adjustments and the great thing is i've got a couple people that have their own thing they found over years and years and years of trading their own little niche they just like these two type of strategies and they're not going to deviate they don't want to learn any new strategies, but they're going to be in the dragonfly class, even though they don't even know if they like it or not. And that's not their intention as learning a new strategy. They're going to be participating in it to learn more about the exit strategies and adjustments because we're going to go into synthetics of call versus put. Okay. When you understand the synthetics to manage trades, it gives you a couple benefits. You can wheel around things better. For people who have day trade issues, I do this all the time in the pot class. I'll go out and buy the 41, 50, 55 call spread and say, you know what? I don't like this anymore. I just want to sell it out. Or I buy this butterfly, the 41, 40, 50, 60 butterfly. And at the end of the day, it's worth two bucks. And I say, we bought it for 30 cents. It's at two bucks. Let's sell it out. And a bunch of people say, I can't sell it out. That's three sides. It blows all my day trades. Okay, well, we're just going to do the equivalent with puts. We did calls. Now we'll do the equivalent with puts. It's the same thing. You'll get your two bucks without creating a day trade. But you have to understand synthetics. Okay, so we're going to be employing enhanced hedges. Okay. Along the lines of like a three-legged box, which is really important during um, expiration day, the moments leading up to expiration. This week, we're having a class on order and balances. And the three-legged box is going to come into play for that because it's when there's very little time left or in equities certain equities that are low volatility equities, three-legged box is beautiful. And so there's going to be a lot of management with the three-legged boxes and using synthetics as an alternative management exit opportunity. Now, everybody always asks me, what's a three-legged box? Okay. And I get that even from people in pot class who have only been around for a couple months. They're like, wait, I don't remember learning what a three-legged box is. Hey, it's just real simple. Here's one we actually did. This is, I think, Glenda's actually. Um, back on the 13th. 
and you know glenda was up until glenda's been working for me for i think what five years six years now and, and she had zero interest in learning options and all of a sudden all my students had just got her peaked interest and now she's trading up a storm and now in the last year she started trading start playing i'm getting texts all the time scott what do you think about this condor and tesla and but here's one a three-legged box for somebody who never understood what an option was a year ago this was expiration day cleanup and she went out and bought the 41 40 35 put spread for four bucks and then hedged it with the 35 call for 30 cents there's this call itself. You can see it's the 35 strike call. You can tell by where that elbow bends. Here's the put spread. And when you combine them to two, what do you get? You get a 40 strike call for free. You don't see a 40 call there, do you? Okay, you don't see any 40 strike call up there. You see the 40 put, the 35 put, and the 30 five call but you can tell it's the 40 call from where we get the angle on the graph for those who don't know what a box is you're going to learn that this weekend but a box is just a riskless riskless trade where you're long the call spread and long the put spread or long one synthetic stock and short another synthetic is another way of looking at it and the box spread has to be worth the distance between the strikes at expiration so the distance between these strikes is five bucks it has to be worth five dollars at expiration and you see that she paid 430 so how much did she minimum make 70 cents or 70 dollars but because she didn't sell out one of the tails of the box which a strict box would have been selling that. She's got the 40 call on for free. In these type of adjustments, when doing dragonflies or any strategy whatsoever, are huge opportunities. Now, this one didn't hit. Or actually, this one did, I think. Yeah, I think we closed at 41, 42, 50-ish that day. So then she made an extra 250 on the fact that she had on a free 40 call and closed at 41, 42, 50. So she got a free call that went out at 250 intrinsically. Okay. Now, as I said earlier, One of the most powerful things about this trade or this trading class is that these hedges that you're going to be learning for the dragonfly work for regular butterflies. The same things are attributable to hedging condors, vertical spreads, and a whole bunch of other trades. So even if you walk away from the class and say, you know what, I hate the dragonfly. It's going to make you a better trader in hedging other trades. You're going to start seeing other ways of wiggling out of a trade that you may not have beforehand. Okay. And one of which is the three leg box. Now, what's also cool, and Tom mentioned at the beginning of the class, is he's, he's on board too. Tom like is the most prolific spreadsheet writer I've ever seen in my life. Well, I'm sure there's others, but... And they do okay. You made this thing in like five minutes. No, it takes, it takes uh, me longer up. than that to figure out what it does. I went to bed at seven in the morning one night this weekend to working on it. So it was an all nighter. Well, you make it look easy. Okay. That's all I can say. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I get an email, I'm working on a spreadsheet and, and then like, okay, I'll get back to you. I'll, I'll, I'll hand write what I think it should look like. And before I could hand write what it looked like, you had it there. So <laughs> But he's got a spreadsheet that hooks up real time to broker sites. And it, like you can see right here, and it's not done yet. It's a work in progress, but I think he's getting really close. But here, it's a dragonfly. And then all you do is click on this, and it sends the message to your broker. So you don't even have to re enter as a broker. It's, it's cool. 
I mean, this thing is, I, I love this. This is the part I was talking about, Tom. Is oh, the expected area. move? We're the expected move. I mean, now I look at the, I, I just look at the straddle and automatically know what the expected move is because I've just been doing it for so long. I'm like, well, market's at about, you know, da, 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 and okay, here's where the straddle is. I know what the expected move is. And I just mentally check it off in my head. But when the day gets busy and stuff, you're like, you forget it. And like, okay, let me recalculate and stuff. But here it's just, it shows you. It just shows you. It's it's it, it. But here you can see he's got the dragonfly up there, and the different strikes, and also spreads here, which is going to be imperative in the class. Makes in terms of making things easy because like okay, I've got a dollar thirty into this dragonfly. Where can I spread it off real quick? Oh, you know what? I can sell this, collect a dollar twenty. Now I'm into the trade for a ten cent debit, or I can sell this one and be in it for a twenty cent credit. Which do I prefer? I mean, it just it, it makes people who aren't accustomed to looking at the screens and nothing else all day life so easy. Anything you wanted to add, Tom? Well, I did add another column for the verticals, and you can actually. Um, there's a drop down for that 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 verticals if you want to look at the vertical prices too. But the, you, you took that before I put that in there. So, well, this is just a snapshot. This isn't even your spreadsheet, right? Because I don't even know how to embed it in a slide. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to look like this when you pick the days to expiration. I mean, it, it does everything that you're going to be learning in the class. But I guess, like, when, see, I'm old. Okay. I'm in my mid 50s. I'm well, older. <laughs> well, you're ancient, right? You're like, yeah, I'm a dinosaur. Your warranty is up. So, <laughs> so, um, but you remember time in school, we weren't even allowed to have calculators. And then all of a sudden I got upset when my kids started being allowed to have calculators in school, but at least they had to learn it first. Okay, they had to learn nine times nine is 81. So then when they punched in the wrong number, it came up 729, they knew why. Now I don't even think kids in school have to do that. Yeah, um, I had to first learn how to use a slide rule. I, I, I never had to do that until flying. Yeah, the whiz wheel. Yeah, the whiz wheel. Those things upset me. But um, but then it, then I, I came to embrace him like this is kind of actually ingenious whoever invented this E3B. But um, yeah, it's pretty handy. It, it's pretty cool. Um, but now, I mean, with this, the, I think the best part is, you know, and, and I'm not a spreadsheet guy and I hate computers. When I was in the pit, it was all open outcry. There were no computers allowed, et cetera. But what's embracing me on this is I'm not a fan of computer trading, but it's, it is what it is. And what I like about the spreadsheet is when you analyze this trade, like you see over here, um, If you like it, then you just click on it, it sends it to thinkorswim. And that's where I make the mistake. I'm like, that's where I make a lot of mistakes. I'm like, oh, I love this trade. I better get it in fast before the market moves and it disappears. And I rush too fast and I hit the wrong strike. And next thing I know, I got call instead of put going and stuff. Here, it takes that air out of it. You know, yeah, and you so, can make and control how many spreads you're trading. So if you want to do a five lot or a 10 lot, it takes care of that for you. Right. Well, and it does the math for you. It tells your profit. And I mean, it's too fancy for me, <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm, I'm slowly embracing it. Um, I think well, for I hope most it, people, I hope people like it. I think yeah. people will love it. And I, you know, I don't know what you're going to charge for it, but it's worth it, whatever it is. Cause I think just what people save and mistakes will pay for it. Um, well, I found on the other spreadsheets I made when I'm putting orders in, it's so, I mean, it literally takes like five or 10 seconds to put an order in. You don't have to go through the option chain and oh, I want this one to sell that one. You know, it's just click, click, boom, you're in. Well, that's how long it takes me. But then sometimes it's a put spread instead of a call spread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
Um, then like, okay, I did a put spread. I want it to be a call spread. I'm going to box this off. And then it's just extra work. But, um, but yeah, this is coming soon. Um, Tom's still tweaking it. I don't know what he's going to charge, but it, it's really cool and it's worth it. Um, any questions? I want to give it to people in your class. They don't have to pay for it. Well, I wasn't even asking for that, time, but okay. Anyone who takes a class gets the spreadsheet from Tommy. There you go. Done. That's awful generous of you. Um, will the sessions be recorded for us to review again? Yeah, you can watch as many times as you want. We're going to actually break it into four recordings over two days. We'll have like morning to lunch and then lunch afterwards so that it's easier to... Um, for, for us to edit, if I say something inappropriate, which is, I think the girls edit out like probably 20 minutes a day of stuff I probably shouldn't have said. And, uh, and, uh, if some file gets corrupted, then I only have to do a half a day again instead of a full day. Um, but yeah, you can watch as many times as you want. And I don't know, I think I should talk to my office to see what the, the, amount of viewing is but i guarantee you on average people watch my recordings more than once and i know some people watch the recording religiously like every six months you see them go back to it for review but yeah you get to see it again and again okay now there was another question oh let me see Um, or Juliano, yeah, Juliano had a question. I think either I think I may have just spoken too quickly or something, but what I was trying to articulate and failed is that all I was saying is that a butterfly, and you want to call put or call, we can do puts. People keep asking for puts. If I have a put butterfly, and then I add a sail to it, let me come up with a different color. To bring in some more money, it turns into a BWB. And this is a put BWP. That's what I was trying to say. Now, if you, but Juliano, you know, this is not what I said, but it, expanding on what the question is, is let's say you have a put spread that you sold and you no longer like it, or you're still comfortable with it, but you want to add some protection to it. You can always turn it into a BWB and say, you know what? Sold this put spread for a buck. I know I can buy the butterfly for 50 cents. So if I'm willing to give up half of that credit by adding a butterfly to it, I turned it into a BWB for credit. And now I've got a little bit more protection. That's one way of looking at it. So you can, instead of looking at a BWB as a package of just a butterfly and then the vertical sale included in it, expanding on your question, you could probably manage the trade of a vertical spread or a regular butterfly by simply adding the other later on. Or if you got a butterfly on and you're like, well, I got 50 cents in this butterfly. I don't like it anymore. I don't think we're going to hit there. Well, sell a call spread for 50 cents. Now you're into the BWB for free. So hopefully an attack on that level or approach answer the question you have if not ask me a question again I'll, you know if i'm misunderstanding the question it's it's probably my fault and i'll be happy to take it again no you said got it thank you okay now as i said earlier tom gets specials that only our students get and then sometimes tom actually sneaks in and gets a little bit better of a deal um, for his students and his attendees, 
everybody missed the early bird special, which expired on February 11th. We will still give you guys the early bird special, which is 19% savings, $150 savings. Plus, we also give out a free month of pot trial, which we charge $299 a month. You get all our trades with it that we're doing at the time and four nightly sessions on Wednesdays and the recordings. We'll throw in a month of that too. So between $7.99 for the Dragonfly class and a month of pot, we're talking almost $1,100, and, but you guys get it for $6.49. And Tom's going to throw in the spreadsheet. Yes. So I got to buy you a pizza again. Hey, I think you're talking about Gibson's next time. You know what? I'll take you to Gibson's. I'll, I'll be happy to take you to Gibson's. <laughs> Never <laughs> been there, but I heard it's good from somebody else, too. Yeah, it's the best in Chicago. It's it's one of the best in the country, actually. Um, you know, if you're a steak eater, you can't go wrong with Gibson's. They just bring a a table on wheels out with like pretty much a cow, and you get to pick what you want. That's and funny. we're talking huge portions. It's not like Ruth's Chris, where their fillet is like an hors d'oeuvre. I mean, we're talking like I can't finish the meal. Well, I think Gabby and I'll have to split one. She's a small eater, so. Yeah, yeah, she is a small eater. But, you know, I think you make up for it, Tom. Yeah. So you get, <laughs> We average out, you know. <laughs> you average out to a full meal each. So, um, but, yeah, it's this uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um. And you guys get it for the original early bird registration, even though it's expired, plus a free month's pot. And Tom's going to throw in the spreadsheet. Any other was questions? That, what was that place you told me about where they're insulting all the customers? Oh. Is that the hot dog stand? The wiener circle. The wiener, yeah, that's it. If you want, I don't know how, see, my, my students have already preconditioned to me. And anyone that's easily, easily offended is like, ask for a refund and left and they're fine to go go okay because i can't be on my best behavior all the time i can't even be on my best behavior for a week and um that was so, so funny <laughs> and, and i'm a floor trader you know i went from the four years in a front house to the trading floors i'm so nothing you know, changed is what you're saying well I'm, people are surprised i use utensils when i eat so um <laughs> You know, these are the most caveman-like environments you could ever grow up in. But, um, and I was considered somewhat of a class act for being a floor trader compared to the other guys. I mean, some are just animals. And, um, but, yeah, it's... I'm not even going to go there, but it's, <laughs> I'm going to back off, but okay. Um, ask me another question. Get me derailed from this conversation, but uh, where were you asking anyways? What, what road did I go off on a tangent on? Uh, we were talking about Gibson's and uh, Nick asked, may I ask in general, how far out in expiration you go? And how many days in the trade or do you stay in? Do you close at expiration or early? Well, see, in, in a lot of this criteria that I'm going to be presenting Saturday and Sunday is a little bit flexible because everyone has their own risk reward tolerances. Now, one of my instructors that used to work with me, his name's Terry, he spent 17 years on the trading floor under the CBOE. And he is probably the most successful trader I know in terms of a winning streak. Not dollar-wise, but he went 17 years without a losing month. It's a and good record. The, it's way better than mine. Okay. And he was very, very conservative. He made a great living, okay? And he was trading in 87 during the crash, 89 during the mini crash, et cetera. 
and he wants to, and it's all documented. You know, he can't make a statement like this. He's he's regulated. He's got his broker dealer's license. He can't make up just stuff. And and he's showing everybody his track record in term in classes we did where he went 17 years without losing month. Now some months may only been like four dollars, but he still was up. I I've had sickening months at times. Now I had a different trading style. In 87, I did great. 89, I did even better. Okay, during the Russian coup, you know, I I don't know if you guys remember the Russian coup when Boris Yeltsin was standing on tanks, getting pelted by rocks and garbage. We were limited down that day because the rumor was that the military was doing a coup again and going to launch a preemptive strike of nukes against America. And so we were limited down because for some reason, if the whole planet's going to get blown up, people want their money in cash and not stocks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go figure. Me, me, I want potassium iodide bullets and canned food, but <laughs> people wanted to be in cash. And so we were limited down and I'm sitting there at ground zero because Chicago exchanges are an epicenter of where some of Russian missiles are. I'm like, well, I'll be vaporized. So if I go for a hundred million dollars today and vaporized, I don't know how they're going to collect. And I was just selling premium left and right, left and right. And I made millions that day. I made millions in the first hour because as soon as well, um, Russia made an announcement that the nukes are locked down. It's not a military coup, et cetera. We went from limit down to positive on the day. And all the premium I sold, and most of it was put just evaporated. I was selling puts at like $12 that went out at, that went out at a nickel. And not really a nickel, because back then we were in 16th. So it was 1 16th, which is 0 0.625, but now we trade in nickels. But, um, you know, I've had a lot of million dollar days. Um, Terry's never had a million dollar day. So it's different trading styles. So leading up to that, to answer your question, a lot of the criteria we're gonna be teaching on Saturday and Sunday, you're gonna have to fudge for your own personality. We'll give you the guidelines and you say, well, I'm a little bit more aggressive. I would rather put 30 cents into this trade and have that 30 cents expire worthless on five contracts, which is $150, to have this huge wide range of where I can make money and a big profit epicenter. Other people, and I'd say probably 30% of my students are always looking at, I've got this money in, I don't care about the profit as much as getting my 30 cents back. I'd rather have a lesser trade on for free than a better trade on for a 30 cent debit. So a lot of it depends on ones. And you and I were talking about this last night, Tom. You know, I mean, I'd rather scooch my spreads out a little bit wider and for 10 cents and unwind it that way. So a lot of it depends on your own personality that you can't conform to. I can't trade like Terry, I'd fall asleep. I would literally fall asleep in a pit every day with all the screaming and everything, if I traded like Terry, just because there was no adrenaline, no juice, and Terry couldn't trade like I did because he'd have an ulcer and die. Um, so you have to conform to your personality and decide, okay, what kind of person are you? Are you the kind that would rather have the trade on for free with a small profit range or on for a 30 cent debit with a huge profit range or is, you know, Goldilocks somewhere in the middle? Okay, and I think Tom just put the link on for the discounted price. God, you were yeah, so the, fast, Tom. Oh, no, that goes to the order form. The other link I put in is the forum post they had, which kind of talks about the class and also has this link in it. So either one works. Okay, well, and you know what? I'm going to be a smart ass. There we go. There we go. I'm learning your Zoom really quick. Zoom's pretty good. It's the uh, the new WebEx. 
you know what? It's it's better than it was. I, I remember struggling to find the controls, you know, years ago. Maybe I'm just getting better at it. But um, it felt more clumsy before. I haven't looked at it in a long time, and it's pretty intuitive now. Maybe we'll play with it. Well, I know we have Zoom as a backup in case anything happens with GoTo. Well, you can always use mine if you want to, too. No, I, I think we had both of them. I think we subscribed to Zoom, but it, it's more just a backup because you were in the military, right? Two is one and one is none. Oh, yeah. So. Um, and if yeah, you're five minutes early, you're late. Yeah. Well, and, you know, well, I used to tell my wife, you know, two is one and one is none. And it's a surprise we're divorced. She took her a while to figure out what I meant by it, but. <laughs> Just kidding. Any questions, Tom? I don't think so. Am I missing some questions? Because I scrolling. think you got them all. Okay, it looks like it. Okay, if anyone's got any questions or wants these slides, you know, just I'll send them to Tom, and or you can yeah, I'll them. post them in the library with the recording. I also put it on YouTube, so yeah, hopefully you'll get a good turnout for your class. It's going to be fun, and then. And you didn't really mention it, but in March, we're going to be doing a zero DTE workshop. And Scott's going to teach a couple of classes for that. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm still working out the uh, the outline of who's going to talk about what, when, but um, it, it'll be good. I'm Looking excited about this. this. This I love the Z zero DTE trades. I mean, we had a, you know, a day trading class in pot, mini class, not too long ago. and uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. And that thing was a huge success. Let's see. Uh, I uh, put a trade on 15 minutes after we started here and it's up 200 bucks right now. So <laughs> got a lot of these zero DTE trades. Well, yeah, you, you, you know that oh here it is here's what we created by the end of the day it's a beauty okay in my day tree class so worst cases i think we made like 50 bucks and if we end up near one of these condors or butterflies or something then you make more and, and this is kind of stuff we'll be talking about in march well actually this is tom circus so i'm going to just talk about whatever tom wants me to well, uh, there's lots of things we can talk about. But. Okay. Yeah. Gibson's. Gibson's. There you Gibson go. Gibson's stakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott, I got to run and we don't want to keep people here longer than we need to. Yeah. But, well, uh, the market's going crazy. I know some people want to get back to the market before we close in 45 minutes, but I want to thank everybody. If you guys got any questions about the class, feel free to email me them and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, send them to admin. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen there. I'm going to send Tom the slides so you can get them from him or you can get it from, from our company, whatever you prefer. Um, my office will be happy to send them to you too. And Tom's going to post a recording. I will. In YouTube. And thanks so much for your time, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, thanks so much, Scott. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you guys next time. Oh, and, wait, uh, you forgot one slide. One slide? Yes. Forgot to thank Tom. Oh. <laughs> there's your, oh, the T thirty eight. That's a Randolph T thirty eight. There's your there's your plane. I was uh I was flying in those. Fun that fun was, jet. Tom was a jet pilot. He was a real major Tom. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll see you next time. And thanks again, Scott. And we look forward to the class this weekend. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Yep. Mm -hmm.